Hello, and welcome to the Darth Grumpy Dad Twitch stream. Uh, today I'm uh, going to be doing some Diablo 4. Sorry for the pause, I was checking the stream. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been wanting to do some D4 videos but i wanted to play the game more and get to understand it more before i started um <clears throat> putting videos out this one and and i'm i'm using my main account which i'm kind of loath to do i usually use the darth grumpy dad account but uh i figured you know until i can get it set up where that account has its own version of the game and whatnot um that i just uh do a couple with my main. Um, so, at this point, I'm already, as you can see, I'm already level 65. Uh, I'm in the main town of Koshed here. I've got a lot of my renown taken care of. I've got a build going for Necromancer here, my Necro boy. I'm doing a, a minions build. Uh, um, if you if you're not good enough at the game and know enough about the game to build your own builds and gather all the different pieces of gear that complement where you're going for, uh, there's great sites to go look up builds. One is Mobile Lytics, and the other one is um, Crunch or not Cruncher, uh, Matrol. Now on Mobile Lytics, this build is considered an S tier build. On Match roll, they've got it like down at a C class build, right? It's a slightly different build. There's, but <clears throat> yeah, this is so just between the two, I'm sure you can find something you're interested in that matches your play style or what you want to do with the character and go with it. Not all builds are going to get to your top tier dungeons, but they'll get you through the game. And most of them also come with starter builds as you're building a character. And if you're going in a certain direction, how you can build so you don't have to uh, respect your entire skill tree. But um, let's see, general overviews. Okay, so uh, play, again, playing on Xbox. So I'm using an Xbox controller. Uh, two square button brings up your map and your map menus from there. You can go to your season and what you have done there, your main map. You hit the Y button for rewards, and you can see where you are on collecting your renown, which, as you can see, your renown gives you, you know, at, at the very end, each one gives you plus four paragon points, which is pretty handy once you break 50 and you can start putting points in paragon. It gets you, you know, it gets you at least one paragon tree filled out. Or, or card, actually, because, uh, see, and then you, your main menu button brings up your character and your equipment. Your Book of the Dead for this character, which is your my minions page. And then abilities, and you can choose from your skill tree or your paragon tree. Click down on the right thumbstick, and it brings up your skill tree. Now... The thing you want to do when you're building is decide, like, are you doing a bone build? Are you doing blood? What, what, you know, what are the main things you want this build to do? And then fill your your tree out in that direction, right? If I was doing the, doing the bone spear necro, for instance, I'd I'd start with uh, bone splinters. Probably put one in three of these. And I think it is one in this one, one here and I think yeah initiates bone splinters right because they make vulnerable I'm not I don't remember if that's built around vulnerability or crit strike but right you just put one point into the five possible in this one right and then you put five points in your bone spear one here and one in probably makes vulnerable I think vulnerability is one of the vulnerability and crit strike are the two things you're going to build around. Right? Huge flesh. 
a lucky hit chance of creating a corpse just from hitting something with your basic or core attacks. So you have your, your basic attacks, your basic skills, your core skills, which on this build I have no core skills except for the hewn flesh, right? <laughs> right, and then down here are your corpse and your macabre skills. Macabre, macabre, whatever. So I have blood mist, right? I have corpse explosion, bone prison, right? I have one in grim harvest. So it helps generate essence and then fueled by death, which increases the damage, my damage by 9% for six seconds after consuming a corpse, right? Um, death's embrace, amplify damage, and then I have decrepify, just one point in it, and then my, right, enhanced and abhorrent, and then just like one point in gruesome mending. Three points in blood orbs. Also heal minions for 60%, right? Get a bit, you know, give, just gives you better viability, right? Survivability. Corpse tendrils, and they whip out, and they grab guys, and they make them vulnerable, right? And create blood orbs on this one. Necrotic carpus, carapace, right? Your skills of your minions fortified by 6%, right? When a corpse is formed, handy. And then Reaper's Pursuit, damaging with darkness skills. And I and, and I have e affixes to my gear and stuff that make almost all my damage darkness damage. So that's a big deal, right? And then, oh, yep, that's your... And then down here are your ultimate skills. You get one ultimate skill. And on this one, I've chosen Bone Storm, right? Got one point in each of these. And then I got three points in Bonded by Essence, Death's Defiance, and Inspiring Leader. And again, this build is on Mobilytics. Get that there. And then the key passive, which is a passive that runs in the background at all times, and Shadow Blight. So it works with the shadow skills. Uh... And I got to check, like they changed this Paragon and the Paragon tree on this is far different than the, like you used to just have four <clears throat> areas you put Paragon in and then you put all your remainder and your intelligence or whatever your main stat for the character was. And this one, you, you actually have these cards where you, you know, like you, you only have like 220 some Paragon points max, I think. And so you have to choose wisely which cards you use and how you fill these out. And in some areas, like here, there's glyphs that can be socketed. You can put, pick the socket, the glyph you can put in. And once you get enough points into it, level it up high enough. At the end of Nightmare Dungeons, you can level these up. Then it affects the areas out, right? So it maximizes the amount of points you've gotten some of these skills out here. And I'm, I'm working over to this one over here on this one, right? I've got this one here in the middle. And then I believe two more cards will come off. One will come off here and one, right? Because I'm going to put all the points because there's no cards attached to this area. So I'm going to fill this area out and then come back over to these. Right, and I'm still working on leveling this up because I just haven't had time to do that many Nightmare Dungeons, really. Right, so that's your skill tree and your Paragons, abilities, with the Dad. And then your character, and as you can see, uh, your gear can be... Get up there, there we go. You can upgrade your gear, most of it five times, some of it only four times. Um... Your gems, I haven't got the next level of gem opened yet, so I don't have the highest gems in. Um, now, these are fixes on the uh, legendaries can be changed. You can go to, 
this guy over here, right here, this guy here, yeah, here, this guy, you know, you know, this guy right here. You go to this guy, the occultist, and you can extract, right, the aspects, the legendary aspects off the gear. Imprint, you can, and then you can imprint it on other gear, right? I don't have any legendaries I can extract from right now. All right? You can craft sigils. Now these sigils, once you get once you get the game, get far enough into the game, you can craft these sigils that turn any of the regular dungeons you've been in into nightmare dungeons. Now, these will only work in world tier 3. These, these first four right here, right? And um, the tier list, one through five, six through 10. So it's, the way the game works already is set up. So whatever level you are, no matter whose lobby year you're in, whether you're playing um, tier one or tier four, the monsters are, are gonna be the same level as you. The only difference is, is like on, on tier one, they just have a lot less health than they do on tier four, right? They're not as aggressive on tier one as they are tier four. And the way these work is it would start at whatever level you are, 65 plus five more, plus six to 10, plus 11 to fit, right? And now then, then these ones that you can only do in, in world tier four, Right, so then it starts, if you're level 60, the monsters start at 70. Right? <laughs> so, and then it goes all the way up to tier 100. So these are basically the greater rifts of this game as compared to Diablo 3. This is what you would consider the greater rifts. And you can craft the sigils. And as you can see in my consumables, Right, you can pick them up because I picked one up. Right, let tier twenty-one sigil, which would turn the iron hold dungeon into a nightmare dungeon. Right, and then as you can see, iron hold and how is there? You only get four revives in it. Right, so you only get you, you can die four times in it. So if you're going in there with a crew and somebody dies, it's best for them not to use a revive. You need to go revive them. So you know, so that person you only get four. Revive yourself, revives in it, right? So if everybody's dead, right, that you're going to want the strongest guy in the crew to revive himself and try and revive you guys, right? And uh, so dungeon affixes gold fine. There's 50, 30 percent more gold fine, right? Drifting shade. This is the downside, right? So your bonus is gold fine. The downside, drifting shade. Drifting Shade chases players upon reaching them and explodes for heavy damage and creates a nightmare field that dazes victims, right? If I remember right, this creates like a, a dome shield. If you're inside that, when it explodes, you're all right. But it, 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 it stuns anybody outside of it, basically, right? Monsters bleeding damage. Monsters deal additional 30% of their physical damage dealt as bleeding over five seconds, right? Monsters have poison resistance. Barrier breakers. Monsters deal 100% more damage to barriers. Right? So, I mean, it... The, and and there's various types. If I go to my stash box up here. Like, I mean, the main town, Cove Shed again. Pull this up on the map. You see, it's a pretty good-sized area, man. This is This is... You know, in the future, some of these areas might get flushed out more, I'm sure, as the game goes on. Right? They'll flush some of these areas out more. I can't see them not. I mean, why wouldn't they create just a massive world, right? This would be like one continent out of seven. You know, I mean, the game could go on for a long time. <clears throat> so Kovashad, right? And the, of course, services, your chest, your wardrobe, a healer, an arms, uh, a weapons dealer, uh, an armor dealer, a jeweler. Uh, the little bag is the, purveyor of oddities it's basically like kadala you're at where you go to gamble like in d3 you had kadala and in this you have a purveyor and, and not all areas have the same 
services. See, like this guy's got a blacksmith and a healer, and that's it at that waypoint. So, and after you complete the main seasonal storyline, the malignant storyline, that uh, on the very end, there's a, a little table with the green leaf that's the seasonal, and that guy's table is only here in Kovashad. Like, uh, until you complete the seasonal journey, there's a table in a few different places, wherever his wagon is, and then here in town, and, you know, and then, of course, you've got, uh, oops, get back over it. Uh, where was I? Uh, your jeweler, your purveyor of oddities, your stable, your blacksmith, your your alchemist, who makes your potions. The three circles, again, is your occultist, and then your jeweler. Like the, the top one where the amulet is, that's a person who buys and sells jewelry. The actual gem is the actual jeweler who who can take gems out of things, craft higher level gems, put sockets on items for you, and can change affixes on jewelry, right? Your, your uh, occultist changes the affixes on all your other gear. The jeweler actually changes the affixes on your jewelry. And then you have Cormon's table, which I can go to right now. It's right here. Doobly doo, doobly doo, doobly doo. Right? There's Cormon there. Right? So you can craft malignant's heart hearts here. Craft invokers. Right? I think this one only works in like level one or two in certain areas. Like I still have to get that. I have to go do that. And right, and the tormented invoker only works on torment level T4, right? Tier four. Devious invoker invokes a monster. Once you add these are you go to the malignant tunnels, which are extra dungeons for seasonal, and at the end of the dungeons they have a place where you can put one of these invokers and it'll call forth a devious monster, which will drop a devious heart or a brutal heart. Or a vicious heart, right? So you can you can farm them, and it generally drops one or two, one between one or two hearts in the tunnel itself. So they're good places to go to farm for that. And then you can salvage, like this heart. Like I have no use for this heart, so I'm going to salvage it for the ickers. So I can use the ickers to craft hearts or invokers that I need. Uh, critical. I'm not using that one for this build. Not using that one. Nope. Uh, nope. Not using that one. And, oh, using that one. I am using that one, right? So it gives me, it basically, basically gives me a free, a free charge for my, uh, Decrepify curse, right? It'll apply it automatically. I don't have to have it on my skill bar down there, right? Your chest, you can it, it starts with I believe one, maybe two slots, and you can buy, you know, you can have a total of five right now slots. Um take deposit. I don't think I have any gear I wasn't going to get. Oh, go back over. This is where I'm keeping my... Because really, once you get to higher levels, there's only going to be like three of gems. You're going to need three slots for each type of gem and skull, right? Because that's certainly... It. Like, at a certain point, all you pick up are these and these, right? And once you get to a certain level, of maybe the third highest one, you might have to craft those. I don't know. I'm not that far into the game. Right, so then I bump her over to deposit, deposit, then I bump her back over to take, and I click the right thumbstick to sort, and it sorts the stash from right greatest value down. Oh, this one, I don't need this one. I can go salvage that one. <clears throat> now, it costs a lot of gold to upgrade your gear. Right, to uh, 
Like you see, I have all those little yellow dots on my gear that showed that I had upgraded the gear. That costs a lot of money. Costs a lot of a lot of money. Oh, oops. I'll come now. Costs a lot of money and a lot of materials. So I suggest like one round you got do do a dungeon or do whatever. Claims for renown, do some uh, side quests. And you come back and sell all your stuff to to a vendor, and the next time you come, come and salvage it all. And I don't remember what the last thing I done was, so I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna vendor it all. Now you can purchase some stuff here; it's incredibly expensive. Or you can sell your stuff, right? Gems are can you see? Because look, three grand for these. Boots you picked up. Like for a sword with got crappy stats, you can sell it. Get 17 grand. See, so. Anything else? And I just started doing tier four consistently. Um, nope. I wanted to put that in the stash. So you can come to your stash and grab one whenever you want and use it right there where you're standing to turn the dungeon into a nightmare dungeon and then just go to it right so you don't have to carry them on you and sort and that'll sort it in it's one of the lower ones like i was running with some guys who were hauling me through like these i couldn't even leave the door right i had to stand there and wait for them to kill everything i got you know I got a lot of gear I couldn't wear at the time, and I got some XP out of the deal, but it wasn't very fun, right? It wasn't fun at all, just standing there. All right, now, after you're into the game a little bit, your consumables here, let's resort this. All right, so these are my invokers. I don't have a lot of them, you know, and they stack, they stack, so I don't worry about it when you pick them up. And at this point, I have the ones I need. And as you've seen in my stash, I got a pretty good supply. I need to go through at some point and take all the lower ones out. Right? I have a pretty good supply of the ones I'm using. Like you need to go through and... Like these right here. And the ones with the lowest stats like that. Four per 14 of it, right? And just get rid of the ones with the lowest stats on it too. I like these two guys, 15, like, right? Mm, two enemies, a uh, drop card for eight to 21, eight out of 21, so that one's not very much. That's 15 out of 21 seconds. See, you're gonna want the highest level ones with the best rolls on it, and I just haven't taken the time to go to diddle with that yet. Just having too much fun playing the game in general. It, there, it's you see by the map, it's huge, right? There's, whoops, this, uh, like like these the Lilla statues. There's like two hundred and some odd of them spread out across, right? Just finding all those, right? There's a whole bunch of waypoints in the game. You know, there's a different amount for each area. Like just getting all your waypoints, conquering all the strongholds in each area, and then going to starting to do side quests and dungeons for your for your renown to get your right. There's a lot. There's just a lot. Um when you're here at this map area too, if you hit the uh, the left left on your uh, directional hit over to the left it opens this menu which shows you your current quest right so like I've I don't have any of the gold ones I've done all the gold ones I don't have any right at seasonal ones are done so I just have side quests and you know so this one here shows all from all the categories and you can toggle or trigger through your other ones 
And these are just some side quests I didn't finish in different areas because I got enough renown to finish it out, right? So I'm just like, oh, moving on. Don't need this anymore for now, right? Later on, if I need, I'm sure I'll need more points to do my season, right? Some more renown to move that along, right? Season bar. It's got a bunch of freebies, right? If you bought the season. And I'm almost done with it. I'm almost to 90. And uh, these, you get these uh, smoldering ashes that you put in these urns, right? And I think you'll get eight of them total. And, and you can reallocate them. See why? Reallocate blessing, 100 gold. Um, but it seems to me like the like you're going to want the XP and then probably duration like rare material salvage from salvaging. I think that would probably be a good one. I know some people do the bargaining one, but there's a downside to that. Like I can't, I don't know what it is, but there's a downside to doing that and it didn't sound very fun. So it'd probably be earn a reclamation or prolonging, depending on what, you know, if I'm, what I'm doing. Earn of Malignant, right, that's a good one. But, I mean, you get a lot of Malignant Hearts anyways. That's, that one's not such a big deal. And I'm sure as you grind higher level Nightmare Dungeons, you're going to get better stuff anyway. Oh, what was I working? Okay, uh, yeah. Collections. Right, this shows your codex of powers. These are, you can filter, show my class only, right? These are codex affixes, legendary affixes, basically, that you can apply to yellow gear to make it legendary gear or to legendary gear to change the legendary effects, right? And these are always going to be the lowest rank. Right, almost all of these you can get from a weapon or a piece of gear at some point, a legendary piece of gear. Um, and these ones are always going to be the lowest roll, right? The lowest stats, and you can get much higher ones off off gear. You just have to watch for for the affixes you need, right? And then your challenges, of course. Whoops, challenges. I want to stay out of the social page as much as I can. I'd show it to you more, but, I mean, this is my main, and there's probably people in there that don't want their shit streamed online. So, I'm going to skip all that. When I, I when I get my, my streaming account set up for this game, I'll go through all that much clo more closely. Right? I'll do a whole thing after the first season, I'm sure. Uh, <clears throat> or if I get set up where I can... Uh, you know, I want to work on this character mostly, though, right? I don't want to start a whole new, whole new game, go through the entire playthrough of the campaign again, and then the seasonal, and right, because I've already got a decent build. I'm, I'm, I'm killing stuff in tier four, all right, so I can start grinding higher level dungeons. It's just finishing my re renown. Uh, whoops, get out of this guy's way. Go stand here in the corner. And, uh... uh let's see, I can do this at... Oh, another cool thing about this game is your wardrobe. Right? So that's how I run. Yeah, I got a lot better gear on, but I like that look. I mean, he, he seriously looked like... Looks like somebody is going to use dead things to kill you. And I like I like all the writing, the tattoos, the markings look cool. And I, I, I just like it, like them looking plain and simple like that. You know, I have plenty, as you can see, I have plenty of other, right? And the cool thing about this is, once you transmog a, a slot, you, you actually transmog the slot, not the piece of gear you're wearing. So it doesn't really matter what piece of gear you're wearing, as long as it's in an item slot you've transmogged, it's going to show like that 
like this transmog. So it doesn't matter what gear you put on, it's going to look like this, which I think is just really cool. That's cool. That's I wish a lot more games had that, right? And your appearance, you can mess with that anytime, almost anytime. Your headstone, you get these. You can probably, I'm sure they're in the shop. You can buy transmogs for these. And I got these for completing seasonal journey stuff. Uh, I kind of like this one. So that's the one I got going. All right. Um, oops. The shop. This is now you cannot buy power here. All you can buy is cosmetics, right? If you're into that, if you're into, you know, the, oh, look at the cosmetic. Like if you're into that flex, right? There's lots and lots of stuff. And, and the artwork is great. It is. It looks fantastic, right? So there's plenty of that if you're into it. I'm just not into it that much. I'm just, I don't, you know, I, the stuff I get, Generally looks cool enough. I'm not that. You know. Your add-ons right now. All they got right here is Crypt Cores. And then you can buy Platinum of course in here. To buy your cosmetics. Right. And I, I don't overly worry. Like I said. I'm not one to diddle about that and then right here is your game options uh boom should go into that a little your first one is your graphics right your font again i'm old half blind so i got my fonts are all large calibrate your brightness and i just left it where it is my monitor is pretty good you adjust your safe zone now, i had to adjust it a little on this because <clears throat> this monitor i'm using this tv my other monitor decided it didn't want to was getting picky about getting signals from the HDMI. I don't know what was wrong with it, so I had to get a little older one out, and I had to, so for this one, I had to change the safe zone a little. So where you do your sounds, and like, like, like general, I've got the dialogue, and cinematics, pretty loud. I got everything else kind of turned down, right? That way I can have... The volume is on my headset, turned all the way up, and not be getting blasted out all the time. And then I just, I can turn that up and down in here. Uh, sound outputs for when I'm gaming through my TV itself in the stereo. Chat volumes, microphone outputs, da -da -da, all that. All right? Subtitles, da da da, not really, you know, because I'm not, I'm not, I've already listened to all the, I've got it turned off right now because I've already done <clears throat> all the storyline and I've read everything, you know, I already got all that. I don't need the subtitles on. Screen Reader, I'm not, I'm special, but I'm not that special. Speech attacks, blah, 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 right? Item drop sounds. Right? All that. And a lot of that I, I don't even bother with. Right? And then your gameplay Oh, shake screen effects. Turn those off. They're super annoying, I think. The combat hit flash, I don't mind. Reduce strobing. Highlights player when it's obscured, right? Show damage numbers. I don't want all the tutorials. I don't need that. You want your advanced tooltip, right? You want these turned on. Because it, it shows you your ranges of the fixes and your skills and such on a on an item right it gives you the ranges so you know where you are if you if you know, like you need vulnerability and create hit on an item and you got two of them and and they've both got it you want to know which one has got the highest amount of each so if you need to roll one to make it better or whatever right you know it's information you need you want those turned on your heads up item label like i've got that cranked up because i've I've uh, bound some of my controls to different things so <clears throat> so they're not overlapping because I find that more annoying. All right, so this is where you have, I have display player, like I have that turned off because, I mean, the characters come, which 
such good texturing and mapping. And then you want to, right? And then you put that highlight on over it, and it's got this green or blue or whatever co color highlight over it that you don't really need. Annoying. Annoying. Just my opinion. You can disagree, but I think it's annoying. You know, and as he, the character still gets highlighted when they're obscured, when they're behind a big monster, right? Because that's turned on up here. And then the colors for different highlights. Controls, right? Controller vibration on, right? I, I don't have the stick swapped. I'm not that weird. Cursor sensitivity. I've got that turned down a little because I don't think it, it, it generally doesn't need to be that, right? You don't need to be moving and swinging around that quickly in the first place. Inner dead zone, you want that at one. Outer dead zone at zero. Now, like other people have, I'm not 100% why, like other people have explained it to me, but I'm kind of too much of a dummy to uh, explain it well, right? Tells you right there, yeah. Inner dead zone increases the dead zone from the stick's neutral state out, making it take longer to start registering input. Right, which I guess can be handy if you get a little bit of stick drift, you can make the dead zone a little bit bigger. Right, outer dead zone adds a new dead zone to stick. Inflection effectively shortening and input curves presenting making players hit maximum inflection sooner. I don't know about that. All right, and this is where you bind your map screen, your character panel, right? Now, I have this turned off. Combining your interact and your basic skill on one button because so you'll, you'll be trying to pick something up and all it'll be doing is swinging your basic skill, right? Swinging your, like, oh, it like drives me nuts. So I have them on different things. I have interact, I click my right thumbstick to interact with things, right? So my fingers are, all right, uh, way easier. And then my skills are all bound, right? The rest are, are just general, right? Basic skill, core skill, da 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 da, da. Right, and you can, and, and it doesn't really matter because you can change what skill is on each button to fit you anyways. So you evade is B. Uh, I think the only thing, spur them out, there's one. The hold to target lock, right? Use right thumbstick to toggle through. Persistent target lock. So once I do click my left thumbstick to turn on target lock, it stays on until I decide to turn it off. It just moves to the next monster, and I can use my right thumbstick to move to to move that target point to the next month to whichever monster I want targeted. I can flick my that thumbstick around. Action wheel. That's got all your all your social stuff on it, interacting, saying hi, going into the whisper channels and all those other channels that drive me nuts. Right? Social requests. Result like that's a big one. Somebody starts a, a dungeon. And some of the dungeons require that you vote on, or if you're going from uh, tier level two to tier level three, somebody wants to bump up the hardness, right? Show item labels, I don't have that that on anything because I got it forced to be on for an extended amount of time anyways. All these, right? I'm, I'm not using any of these anyway, so I just, nothing. And then I'm gonna skip the social page because like I said, there's probably there, all right? Oh, this is just stuff. Your cross network, you can turn it. Thought I had that turned on. Oh, you can only turn that on back in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I already have it enabled. You can only do that from your main menu when you first start the game, right? And your notification, some of these, you can only set those like uh, allowing your friends to just join your chat whenever they want to turn that on. Um, enable quick join, right? You can only do that from your main, right? So I'd have to leave game. 
I spent 40 minutes just, again, talking about menus and video games anymore. So, ah. All right, so we'll go into our menu again and go into our options, right? Go over here to social. See, this is where you turn that on and off. So I couldn't toggle that on and off in game. You can only do it from here, right? Uh, I think it was the quick one all the way down here, right? Quick join. Allow friends to join your party without an invite, right? You can only turn that on and off from here. All right. Now I got to go back in there and double check. No, it was under social. Yeah, because I toggled those on and off, and it was like, oh, you changed these. Well, kind of, but not really. Um, and then the last one on there, accessibility. And again, uh, like you set all this stuff when you very first start the game on your first playthrough, <clears throat> it prompts you to do all, a lot of this stuff in here, right? Text, text to speech, speech to text, whatever. Right, if you use all that. Dude, and really to be true, I do play with other people, but I, I'm i not a very sociable person. Um, I don't actually play in parties with a lot of people a lot of the time. I just do a lot of solo grinding. Oh, that's my non-seasonal character. I named her Joyce after my daughter because I'm, I'm a douchebag. And, you know, Joyce is kind of the shy, silent, brooding girl type. So, yeah, that's Joyce. <laughs> okay, back to DK all. I think I made one and I messed something up, so I had to make another one, and I named them wrong. It's supposed to be Decays, with an S in there. Decays all. Right, instead of you got one, whatever. I thought it was cute and funny. So I'm sure a bunch of people are like, oh my god, that's so juvenile. Right? How sophomoric. Alright, back to the game. Okay, so. Map. Okay, in the map. Starting at the top, like, it tells you right away what area you're in, right? Which zone. Right, see? Fractured Peak, Desolate Highlands. Let's see, when you move to another zone, it'll highlight the whole zone on the map. Right, Fractured Peaks, the Pallid Glade. And you can go over here, this is where I was working. Right, Kedjistan, Ragged Coastline. And now, looking at the map, these little fosters, these are the ones I've claimed. Otherwise, they don't even show up. You don't see them unless you've claimed them. I'm pretty sure I've claimed them all at this point. Like, the other day I realized there was one I didn't have to have. I had to figure out where the hell it was out of these 200-some. <clears throat> Which, again, I can't believe this. Uh, this game is so complicated, they actually have companion apps for it. There's, like I said, Mobilytics. There's Matril. There's, uh, uh, just for the map alone, there's one... And I actually have that one. There's there's a, a D4 Guides, which I think I have the free app for. There's a D4 Maps through Map Genie, which is the one I have actually bought it's because I can go into the map and tell it to highlight certain things, unhighlight certain things on the map. Like, right, I can tell it, like, just to show waypoints and Lilith Altars. Dungeons, right? Just the stuff. This stuff. I, I, if I don't know where it is, if I'm looking for it, it can locate it for me quickly, um, and then I can mark found on it. So once I've found a Lilith, right, I can mark found on the map, so I know. So I'm not going back to the same ones over and over. Um, uh, and in here, just looking at these dungeons, like right here. See, this has got the little square in the corner. Of it. That means I haven't finished this dungeon. And I haven't claimed that affix that I get as a reward for finishing that dungeon. Or as this one, the little, the little, 
uh, I guess it would be a chest. Reward chest on the corner is gone. That means I've done it. I've got it. Right. And then there's one more type of, it's like a small dungeon. It's called a cellar. And they don't, they don't show up on the map unless you're like, it'll show up on your mini map when you're next to it. But they don't, you know, even once you found them, you don't mark them. On the map, and I don't know why. And that's something that's kind of handy on the D4 map. Is it, it tells you where all those cellars are. So if you're just running around doing cellars, looking for uniques or whatever, you can mark it on the map and know where it is. And another cool thing about this is you can drop a pin location, right? Uh, like I'll drop a pin right here. You hit the X button, pin location. It drops a pin. Now you see that little red line? When I back out of my map, you see up in the corner, in my upper right corner, my mini map, that red line is there. So it, like, I don't have to keep referring to the map to know where I'm going, right? That, it just shows on the mini map. I don't have to keep opening up the big map to look and see, right? <clears throat> and it's handy, but it's not always right. It's not 100% right all the time. I mean, sometimes it will take you the longest possible way to get from one area to the next right and sometimes like there's some areas like i think i was looking like one of uh, one of the dungeons like it's in an upper curve like in an area like that and then there's a, a bit of road up here and i think at one point in early development there was supposed to be like a slide or a ladder you could use there because it'll take you around to the top of it and you can't get down to the dungeon from there. Like, it does stuff like that. It's, it's just kind of silly. <laughs> You're like, why am I going this way? I don't understand. All right, these red areas, these areas of hatred, these are the PvP areas, right? Now, in Tier 1, Tier 2... You're pretty safe going into these areas, right? There's not a lot of people. There aren't people hunters. So if you need to go there to collect the little red shard thingies you get from these areas from killing monsters in there, it's a safer area to go do it, right? But if you go in uh, Tier 3 or Tier 4, go into one of these areas, people will kill you, right? You know, if you want to, if you're if you're out there beating your chest, or me. Big gorilla, silverback, badass. <clears throat> you can mark yourself. You can blood mark yourself, right? Which is basically calling out, I want to fight. And people will come and fight you, right? Or you're letting you, people know you're there to fight, right? And there's something like you get higher bonuses if you win fights or something. I don't know. I'm not into, I've never really been into a person that's into PvP a whole lot on any game. So it's not, it doesn't really interest me. I don't care. I don't, it's like my friends keep telling me, oh, when you get a character, thing, you'll get it. You'll understand. No, I don't. Just not into it. <laughs> you'll have to find another streamer to get that. Uh, sorry, bro. All right. And again, now then, uh, ba -da -doo, ba -da -dee, ba -da -doo. I was also doing, oh, here we go. The dungeons with the little leaf mark. Those are your seasonal ones, your malignant tunnels, where you go to, right? And it tells you that the, at the end of the dungeon, there's, you can create, right, a vicious, there's a vicious malignant pustule in there where you put a vicious invoker in and it creates a vicious malignant monster so you can get a vicious malignant heart. Wow, that's a lot of malignants. It's malignity malignity. It's malignantis. Right? Um, again, collections. Codex of power. Da -da -da. Map seasonal. Uh, season journey. Right? And, and as soon as you have it so you can claim these, you want to claim at least these first four right away because there's, there's some good stuff. You get in there. You get some seasonal aspects. You get some little caches, some coins to spend, 
in the store if that's your thing from again right um this one I have gotten I think one of the things on here is you know kill another player in PvP which like I said I'm uninterested in that um oh and I just haven't had time to do this one to collect enough uh like when you do that there's a thing called a health hide do we even have one going right now uh n not at the moment it doesn't look like there's a health hide right in like these areas here Right, uh, you go in here, ooh, slay the world, but begins in 17 minutes, right? You go here with everybody else, you kill this, this, uh, world boss, and you get a cache that has legendary cache, has a legendary item in it, uh, which gives you a high chance of, higher chance of getting, uh, uh, ancient legendary, a good, with good rolls, um, see, in Grim Favor, you get Grim Favors, Right, for doing certain things in these areas. Right, harvest venomous moats from enemies. Right, and you, you get these Grim Harvest. And when you get them, you come over to your Tree of Whispers, which you open up during regular campaign play. And you turn in your Grim Favors here to, um, to get a cache, basically. You get a cache of... of you can buy rings and amulets or weapons or gloves or whatever it is you need. Which, again, you're just increasing your chances of getting a good item with good rolls. Right? See this one? You have uh, for another hour and 29 minutes. Go do this and get you five Grim. Right? So I have nine out of ten Grim favors collected. I could go get one. I so, but I, I mean, like I said, I've been working so much on getting my renown down, <clears throat> getting the proper affixes for this build, right? That I need on each piece of gear, and finding something with at least semi decent stats, right? And at least sacred, or not just legendary, but sacred, or See, that's just plain legend. I, have, I haven't found a good enough necklace because you need, like, you need cooldown reduction on it, right? There's certain stats you want on each item, and I haven't found a good good enough one to replace it with yet, right? I just, like, I am kind of picky. I'm a picky bitch like that, you know, right? Right, snivelly picky bitch. So, and another thing, uh, and there's, like, right under the description, Warlord Plate of Explosive Mist, Sacred legendary chest armor, 620 or 672 plus 25 item power, right? So the item power on your stuff you want, um, the higher it is, you know, legendary, sacred, ancient legendary, right? The higher that item power is, and the higher the item power is, the greater, the higher the range. I like to see you down there where it says, uh, armor, a put. Under Armour, this is a plus 8.4% basic skill attack speed, right? The range on that, which this is part of having that, uh, the advanced tool tips turned on. So this is your range on that. It's 6 to 15. I know I had a, a, between 6 and 15, it's 8. So that lets me know it's kind of low. Um, and then a <clears throat> lucky hit chance while